Hello, I'm Grim Grindle and welcome to this video. Over the last few months, I've received a few requests from people to do a tutorial on my Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts Star Fox videos. Oh, well, actually, it would seem I received a few requests from one person to do a tutorial on my Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts Star Fox videos. So, I guess this video goes out to you, Ryan. Sorry it took so darn long. This video is going to be a bit of a three-in-one deal because I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how the R-Wing works and the Landmaster works and do a layer-by-layer -layer for both of them and then I'll also do a layer-by-layer -layer on the Great Fox. So firstly, let's have a look at the R-Wing. When I was building the R-Wing, there are a few things I wanted to make sure it had and could do. Firstly, I wanted to make sure the wings could open so I could go into all range mode, which it kind of does. Secondly, I wanted to make sure it looked like the R-Wing, which it sort of does. And thirdly, I wanted to make sure it handles like an R-Wing, which it does mostly. This vehicle is perhaps more than any other vehicle I've made in Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, the symbol of ultimate compromise. In order to get each of these things to work, I had to sacrifice something or the other. It is definitely far from perfect, and even now I still go back and make minor altercations. In fact, I even made some while making this video. So bear in mind, it's not the greatest vehicle ever, and sometimes its wings will fall off, but I guess that's not uncommon in Star Fox 64 anyway, so I'll just pretend that's a feature. So speaking of features, let's get straight to the wings opening. If you're moving too fast when you open the wings, they'll just fall off behind you, and sometimes when you're not moving at all, neither will they. So far, this is the closest I've been able to get it, and it's sort of tricky to work the way you want to, but you do get used to it the more you use the vehicle. Also, it should be noted that when the wings aren't open, because you've got two wings facing backwards, it doesn't really turn properly. At first, I was going to try to fix this, which would have damaged the mobility of the vehicle when the wings are fully open, but then I figured that when the wings are closed in Lila Woods, it's basically an on-rail shooter, and it's not until they're open that you can move around freely, so it's kind of ironically accurate that you can't move around the way you want to while the wings are closed in Banjo-Kazooie. So the way these wings opening works is kind of simple, but a complete pain in the buttocks if you actually try to set it up yourself. It takes a lot of balancing, a lot of really annoying minor adjustments, and really it's just a complete headache to figure out. Luckily for you, you don't need to figure it out because I figured it out and I'm just going to tell you how to do it. Essentially, both the wings are held in a backwards facing position by two detachers. When these detachers are detached, a tow bar on your wing will drag the wings towards your R wing. As they get closer, a second tow bar higher up on your wing will get close enough to a second tow bar on the fuselage of your R wing, which will also drag it inwards. Because of the position of these tow bars, it not only drags the wings forwards, but turns it around, giving the effect of the wings opening. It's sort of hard to explain, so I've moved the seat of the R wing backwards and up, and cut the top of the R wing off, so you can actually see it happening in first person. But aside from being helpful for the example, make sure you don't actually leave the R-Wing shoulder covers off, because while less complex functionality-wise, they are important for actually keeping your wings in place. Aside from that, the only interesting feature in the R-Wing are the gyroscopes, which allow you to do the barrel roll. So that's the R-Wing for you, and if you want to see the layer by layer, watch until the end of the video, or click on the annotation on the screen right now, which will skip you straight to it. Until then, let's move straight on to the far less complex Landmaster. The Landmaster basically utilizes a very similar but far more lazy system that my Pelican does. What I mean by that is within the Landmaster there is a small jet facing downwards. This jet is caged and only attached to the rest of the vehicle via detacher. To drive the vehicle normally, simply detach the jet which will allow it to just sit within the cage within the vehicle and you can drive it around like it's a regular tank. And then in order to hover, hold your right bumper to reattach the jet and then you'll be hovering just as easy as that. And that's the Landmaster pretty much entirely explained. If you want to see the layer by layer of this vehicle, once again watch until the end of the video, or simply click on the annotation right now on the screen which will skip you straight to it. And now finally the Great Fox. When I opened my save file of the Great Fox to have a look at it, my first thoughts were, oh god, oh jeez, how terrible does this look? And well, I suppose that's to be expected because it was one of the first replica vehicles I made. I'd like to think that I've improved by at least a little bit over the years since I first made this vehicle, so I decided to George Lucas it. So this is the Great Fox version 2, or to continue on with the George Lucas analogy, this is the Great Fox Special Edition. So rather simply, what I changed in the second version of this was basically everything. The entire shape of the vehicle is much closer to the vehicle that it was in Star Fox 64, and I've even gone and added the hangar bay on the belly of the ship, which I entirely missed out in the first build of it. 
It is, however, while looking rather fabulous, entirely unremarkable when it comes to the functionality of it, so I won't bother really explaining the inner workings of the vehicle because there's not really much to explain. And so that brings to an end the tutorial for my three Star Fox vehicles. If you want to see the layer by layers of each, what's going to play now following me finishing talking will be the layer by layer of the R-Wing, followed by the layer by layer of the Landmaster, followed by the layer by layer for the Great Fox. If you want to skip straight to the layer by layer for the Landmaster, click this annotation, and if you want to skip straight to the layer by layer for the Great Fox, click this annotation here. If you want to skip straight to the layer by layer for the R-Wing, that's entirely unnecessary because it's about to play right now. So with all of that said and done, as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, I have been and still am Grim Grindle.